Namaskar and a very warm welcome to you all. Today's show is a very special show. You know, we keep on doing different kind of uh, art related things. Last week we had Holi program where you had a glimpse of Holi uh, songs, Kajri, Chati and Tumri. And this year we have a different perspective about art and to talk about that, uh, we have in our studio a couple of artists and of course our own Arun Shivdesani. The Indo-American Arts Council is going to present ninth annual Erasing Borders exhibition of contemporary Indian art and welcome to you all of you here. Arun, Executive Director of Indo-American Arts Council, then we have uh, Reet Das who is an artist and then we have Kulvinder and who is also another artist. These two artists are part of an, a group of aspiring artists who are going to take part in your know, exhibition. Welcome Arun. Thank you. We uh, tell we, us about this ninth year now. Well actually we're very excited because we started off with just studio visits to New York based artists mm -hmm. because that's the first year we started. Um, but now in our ninth year we've grown from each year having small amounts. We used to just have painters. We moved to painters and sculptors. Now we've got printmakers, we've got uh, installation artists, video installations, sculpture, painting, uh, murals, the works, you name it, digital art which you'll hear about. So we've got a wide variety in all the genres and the artists themselves are represent the Indian subcontinent. We don't have artists only from India, we've got them from Pakistan, from Bangladesh and Sri Lanka also. So it's a very exciting exhibition. Maybe then you should change it to Indian, uh, Indo-American, uh, uh, Indian artists, I think you should call it South Asian artists. Then. Not at all, I hate that name South Asian. In <laughs> fact, I think Indian is good because it's the Indian subcontinent and it separates us, separates the wheat from the chaff. Everyone goes on about South Asians. What is South Asia? People have to keep that's a whole other subject. But See, we, we were talking about that. not <laughs> getting into this. <laughs> there she goes. I like that she got spicy from the very beginning. See, <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was going to be me, but and I'm glad she opened the door. So you it's can take that. It's, it's the Indian again. subcontinent. We it's include them all. Place. Yeah. It's a big place. <laughs> and I think you, that also is because you are erasing the borders here. We are erasing borders, and and when people ask me because we do dance and art and music and film and everything and people always say in the uh, Arun you call, call it the, the uh, Indian film New York Indian Film Festival I say it's Indian subcontinent because you know you can't say Indian subcontinent film festival it becomes too long but it's it's understood and people are seem to understand because we get for the for art for dance for everything submissions from across the board from the whole subcontinent so we're very inclusive See, that's, that's interesting. Now, what is the mission be, be, behind this? Uh, well, there's a concept. very, very strong mission. When we started out, mm. honestly, Indian artists were not on the map. It's not that they didn't exist. They weren't on the map. People weren't actually sitting up and paying attention to them. Galleries, I'm talking about the diaspora. I'm not talking about Indian artists from India. Mm. I'm talking about Indian artists from the diaspora. They were good, they were talented, they were there, but people were not inviting to them to exhibitions. People weren't actually paying attention to them. So we did this to actually get people, mainstream America, to sit up and take notice that Artists from the Indian subcontinent are not still in Harappa and Indus Valley. Today, they're alive and well and doing well. And I especially wanted to showcase our artists in the diaspora because Indian artists in India have plenty of people <coughs> selling their work, buying their work, doing things. That's also a new phenomena, by the way, mm -hmm. because I don't know, they didn't have a clue about it before. <coughs> That, that they're doing recently in the last 20 years, but still not enough people were paying attention to our diaspora artists. And that was a very passionate mission of mine. And I think we're doing more and more because each time, and our exhibition travels. It travels for a month to each different venue mm -hmm. so that different audiences are exposed to these artists and as many artists are in the area we invite them to come to speak to mingle we introduce them at the opening receptions so that art so that the the populace around is familiar with them and who they are reet and kulvinder you have this platform where you can show your work what is your take about him why don't you go first kulvinder um well, first of all, it's, it's really wonderful being part of a, a show that includes diaspora and art, artists and uh, artworks. And I think the word global comes to mind when, when we talk about artists from, from this huge continent called India. Um, 
Now, some of us are quite a distance away from that. And if you come to the show, you'll see various narratives, various stories, various cultural, I hate to use the word baggage, but various cultural identities come along in the show. And you'll see a whole, a whole spectrum of it. And uh, just like any other diaspora, I think that interesting things happen <coughs> at the extremes of it. They're not orthodoxies. It's not the orthodox stone carving of Harappa, for instance. It's not the, the weaving that, that's gone on for eons of, of years. It's, it's actually, it's relatively new. It may not look new in the Western sense, but in a traditional Indian sense, the work that you'll see on show, it, 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 it has an, it's a new take on, on art form that perhaps passes a nod to traditional forms, but it's, it's new in itself. So that's kind of what you'll see. Hopefully that's what you'll see. Yeah. I think it's very interesting. Um, you know, I grew up in Brooklyn, as I mentioned to you before. So I actually grew up showing and selling artwork in New York and in the United States for the last 10, 12 years. And actually one of the first people that I knew of Indian descent who actually showed and gained certain recognition was Shazia Sikander. And she actually became very uh, in the spotlight for her miniature painting. So that was very, very interesting that she actually entered the art world of New York with very traditional work. And then she expanded from there. And this show is very interesting because it is quite a blend of not only traditional forms and traditional references, but also modern technology and traditional technology, as well as um, the world around the person that's actually making the art. And I think the infusion of all those different aspects and references is a very unique experience to have in one place. You know, both of you are very young artists, and Arun, this question goes to you also. I'm not that young. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I'm going to ask you is this word diaspora. Do you think you are an artist first, then a diaspora artist? You know, because I think an artist at this generation can be an artist of any You know, place. Ambalika, I need you to know that there's no conflict there because they are no, artists. No, no, I'm not talking about the no, conflict. No, 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 I'm not, just even, talk not even that. They are artists in their own right. Mm -hmm. For <clears throat> our purposes, for the exhibition purposes, I have said diaspora because we get people from India sending us work. And I'd, I'm not interested in showing that work. I want to show, basically, if I said I'm showing art from artists who live and work in the United States who have a heritage from India or the Indian subcontinent. Basically, that's, but it's just too long and No, no, but that is for your, but right. that is for your so purpose, for your exhibition for purpose, purpose, right? For them, they're for artists them. first, yes. yes. However, I think the title of the show sometimes actually pigeonholes the exhibition to some degree. I think sometimes when it becomes an exhibition of contemporary and artists, I think most people who are not Indian actually sometimes really localize that to a very small segment of the world and don't say, well, these are artists in general. Um, so sometimes I think even last year when we talked about it, I had a slight issue with that because I think also the name Erasing Borders, I completely understand the mission and the methodology from years ago. However, I think in terms of the idea of erasing borders today, I think it's less so. I think Indians in America and around the world, it's expansive. I think they are everywhere, in every corner, in every industry you can imagine. I sometimes think, think when erasing borders is continually put forth without some modification of the name, possibly it says something that doesn't really mean what it is at the moment. You see, the point is that it's a question of branding also. We are now known as the Erasing Borders exhibition. Mm -hmm. And so people know us and they, th those who continually follow us and know that, know that this is an exhibition of, and whenever I give explanations, I tell them these are artists living and working in the United States, different parts of the mm -hmm. United States. Now, we have that. It's called Erasing <coughs> Borders and Borders basically, it's not a, it's not a, it's a continuum. It's, it's erasing all kinds of borders where people are exactly what Kulvinder said, global. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's no question of a border over there. But since we started out calling it that, it's a branding issue. I can right. And also them, borders can yeah. be porous They're as well. They're very porous. And so there's a back and forth. And I guess I, I, I'm thinking that that's how you came up with the name in the first place. It's, it's a case of erasing certain understandings of how things are and how different art forms should be. And it, it's, it's dialogue. Between, exactly. It's a dialogue mm. with, between the art forms and also between saying these are artists from this subcontinent as a separate from the mainstream artists. You're not separate. 
But mm. so we, the borders of, of all that, whether it's psychological, mental, physical, anything, are all, we want to erase those borders. Right. But then again, as I said, it's also a brand. It's a co combination of it. Yes. Oh, I agree. And I think the selection of work that's in this current show is very um, illustrative of what you just said. I think there's a very wide selection this year, even more so than last year. I think the work is actually much more diverse this year. I think you have work such as mine, for example, where I, we talked about, if you looked at my work, I wouldn't say that I was Indian. On that note, why don't we ch see your one? Your one? <laughs> yeah, so that was smooth. And, very and smooth. <laughs> that was a very subtle hint. <laughs> I knew this was going to be a very smooth interview okay. from the start. So here's, your, here's, here's your work. Why don't you talk about this? So I use a lot of animals in my work, and I use a lot of man-made blueprints and maps. And I think for me, uh, you know, I champion these animals because that's what I grew up with. Uh, as I mentioned to you before, you know, I grew up with the stories of Rudyard Kipling, Just So Stories in the Jungle Book, and I had tons and tons of pets in Brooklyn, New York, and I think all of those relationships, including me being an only child, are, are infused in the work. And also in terms of laying everything on blueprints and maps, I think that's my kind of nod to the environment that they live in, that we are the environment that houses all of these things. And in a sense, we are the backdrop to all of these animals and pets and things in the wild. And so I always use that as my surface. But I really want the canvas or the paper that I actually make the work on to be dominated by animals because for me, they're very important to my life and I think very important to the world around us. I think it's not only as a reminder to me and my history, but also just as kind of an illustration of things that exist with us. Uh, and you know one thing which I would, you mentioned you growing up in Brooklyn mm -hmm. and most of the Indian parents at that time had this uh, aspiration that that child should be a professional uh, engineer, yeah. a doctor or something like that. How did they take that you became an artist? It was very, you know, convoluted. You know, I grew <laughs> up with the, you know, the idea, strict idea, as most Indian parents infuse in their kids, that you should be a doctor, lawyer, or Indian chief, you know. But every, you know, every week, my mother did an art project with me, every single week. So she ruined me from the start. She, she told me, she, they told me one thing, but she actually practiced with me com something completely different. And what she practiced with me held true through my entire life. However, I do keep a day job in the business world. So in a way, all the things that they told me to do and the things that I want to do, in a sense, blossom together, you know, here and there. That's nice. And Kulvinder, what is your medium? This is again, I think, this is your That's another me. painting, yeah. So uh -huh. would you like to talk about it? Same idea. I think they're just, it's just a swirl of animals in some type of abstract landscape that I create using, you know, multiple stories to actually create these pieces. And the title seems very interesting. I think, uh, I think a lot of time your title is very important. And I think I start off the story with my title. You know, I use one name or a title to begin where you should start off. But then wherever you look in the painting, I think you can discover your own stories and your own, you know, bits and trails of, you know, where that story goes. But I just want to start it off with an interesting title. That's interesting. Kulvinder, yeah. tell us about your background. Um, well, I was born in England. My parents came <coughs> from the Punjab in that, that mass um, journey from the Punjab to England during the 50s, uh, post-colonial edge. Um, and so I, I grew up in England, educated in England, and then I went and lived in different countries for a while. I lived in New Zealand for a while, met my American husband, <laughs> and, which is why I'm here, and, uh, but stopped off in Malaysia, Borneo. I was teaching that uh, for two years before we arrived here, and now I'm here and lucky to be uh, well, privileged to be making art, actually. And uh, is the image up on the screen? Yeah, we are going to show it right, right after this break. Uh, so the image is already okay. on the screen, so let's, let's talk and then we'll go for a break. Uh, okay. Talk about this. And what is the medium? Um, so the images that you see, they're, they're fairly small, 4 inches by 20 inches. They're digital photography archival prints on aluminium. So they're relatively small. They're small because I want to reference the tradition of Indian miniature painting. And uh, the image that you see on the screen, Gaze Away Tangelo, it's a mix of photography manipulated in the, c in the computer and, and painting, direct painting. Um, I like to use the gesture to, to make a sense of the moment in time that it was made. It's like abstract expressionism. I love abstract expressionism. Um, the you images do you do use some Indian icons also somewhere around there? Very much so. I create arenas, little sort of theatres, little vignettes of stories. Um, in the second image, you'll see Awaken Buddha Blue. I, I have an image of a Buddha. And these Indian iconography symbols are from museums. 
So they're actually at a distance. I, I wasn't brought up in an orthodox manner. It's very diaspora. And uh, so these images that I use are f at a distance to begin with. I take photography to talk about the distance even further. And then I paint on the images and then <coughs> take another photograph. So there's quite a process involved in order to make a subtle communication about how far the traditional aspects of my life are. Um, even though I'm considered first generation in England, second in America, no, actually... First in both. Yeah. Is it first here too? If yeah. you're born here, you're first generation. Yeah. I, I don't know. What, what yeah. I you know, I get all confused remember. about that because I came over here when, you know, left India when I was 22, but my children are born here, so are they first or Are I they first? or are you? They're first. They're first? Yeah. So what am I, half? Yes. So you are part of quote unquote diaspora. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. shouldn't they? Yeah. No, they're not. They're American. Okay. Yeah. Let's but take a little short break here, and we'll be back right after this message. Okay. And we are back. We are talking to Arun, Reed, and Kulvinder, and they are going. They are talking. <coughs> Arun is the promoter of Indian art, any kind of art, all sort of genre of art. Arun, tell us something about when you you said you introduce the artist mm -hmm. to mainstream audience, whether they are Indian American or Americans. Yeah. And what is the reaction from your audience? In general, because I would like to ask their comments also. Yeah, you should, in fact, see how they've... Mm -hmm. We've been going, as I said, for nine years. Um, and they've been... It, it's been a progression <coughs> of showing more and more different types. We have had, right up front, that when we first started, the first few years, we always had someone giving a little bit of a talk about Indian art. Because Americans in general or mainstream America, irrespective whether they're Americans or immigrants or who, um, weren't familiar with the art or the genres of art from India. That doesn't mean, as, as, uh, as Kulvinder and Rita have be, uh, been talking about, that their art is Indian art, so to speak. No, I mean, it, they're artists and they do what they have, but somewhere in their subconscious, something about themselves comes out then. And sometimes it's, it's India or Indianness, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean a thing. Um, the reactions have been, it, it, the responses vary, because uh, I think a lot of I'm calling it first generation, second generation, but Reed just finished telling me it's first generation. But <laughs> anyway, people like my kids, young, young people who are born here, who are now young adults, they, people like that who come to the exhibitions, I think initially come for nostalgia. They want a connection with something or some people who are connected in some way to the homeland. Doesn't mean they find it, but there's some connection. Um, Americans come initially, either they're, if they're arts aficionados, they come in to see a, a different genre, a different type, a different culture. Maybe, maybe they find it, maybe they don't. And otherwise, it's curiosity. Um, we have, uh, the Arts Council has um, a very loyal following. We have 40,000 people just on our mailing list, and mm. every time we have an opening, we're packed. Because I think... People just like to come and see what else is new, what's happening, which other artists. Maybe I can buy them, maybe I just want to view them. Maybe a lot of people can't afford to buy art, but they want to view it, they want to see it, they want to uh, indulge in it, experience it, and hear what the artists have to say. So we've had varied uh, responses. You know, you mentioned something very interesting, the buying part. We'll mm -hmm. come back to that later on, but your reaction about uh, uh, audience reaction when they watch your, uh, they see your work. I think it's very interesting. It's very diverse. As everyone said, it's all over the place because you have so many different types of people that actually come to the show. And another thing that's completely true is that the openings are packed. The opening that occurred last year at the um, Icon. at Icon Gallery was truly unbelievable. The diversity of the people that showed up. Um, there was also a lot of talk about buying and selling. So depending on the venue, I think you have different types of audiences. And when you have it at a gallery that's in New York City, I think you do have that type of crowd as well who are looking to buy and who are both Indian and non-Indian. And that's a very interesting perspective to be around. And I think also um, it, it's a dialogue. <coughs> I think when we when any artist makes art, music, theatre, film, whatever it might be, it, it's a communication of sorts. And what we're trying to do, uh, 
I hope you don't mind I'm talking to you, no, but what I'm trying to do as an artist <laughs> is to communicate something of, of that which makes sense in our lives, whether it's our reflections on <coughs> India, our reflections on living here, our reflections on the diaspora Indian life that we lead, the transience that that entails, and all of that. And I think it opens up a dialogue, and I think that's where art is, 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 is important, that it talks Yeah, and another thing is that, you know, it's, it's interesting. We've been to many university galleries, and I think it's, it's good because each of these artists brings something completely different you know, their own perspectives and their own uh, visualization of what they, <coughs> their, their thought process. And it's interesting because um, they've, uh, were, were both of you at the Jorgensen last year? Yeah. You were I there. Was, yeah. you, but, but, you know, they, whichever artist they can pick who happen to be around are uh, put into a panel to, to talk. And I think it's, it's very interesting because the students of art and the people at the universities have a whole different uh, perspective. perspective on it. And as far as buying is concerned, I think Reith is completely right. I think the New York, Manhattan seems to be the place where people, if they are going to buy, would buy. The market has been rather depressed for the last few <coughs> years, but I think that but it's that's in general for, in general for everything. But I think if they if if it if it's going to happen, it's more likely to happen in um, Manhattan. We do go to as many boroughs and as many places as possible. This year we're going to the we're going to be in Queens. We're going to uh, Bronx. We're going to Virginia. We're going uh, to California. We're going all over the place. But that's good because we want to expose <coughs> these artists to different different audiences. How has been the market up till now? Exhibition has it in been terms of selling? Yeah. Mm. Tough. Tough. I, I would say it's been very difficult to sell larger pieces since actually the crash of 2008. Mm. I'd say for smaller pieces that are under a certain price point, it's easier to sell. But once you start getting into, I think, the thousands, I think it becomes very, very Who's difficult. Who is your collector? Uh, it, it varies. There are sometimes the dealers at the galleries, there are sometimes private dealers that actually work on their own, um, and sometimes just friends of friends. Of course, those are the ones that I love because they actually come to the studio and spend time, and you get a chance to talk to them. And uh, I think it's very um, engaging and nice when you can tell somebody the story of your work, whether they actually see that in your work or not, and especially if they buy it. Kulinda, what about your work? And, and uh, just a point <coughs> I wanted to talk about the philanthrop philanthropic side of, of, of if you were to go to a, a show like mm -hmm. the Raising Borders show, is that if the community were to find a piece of art that's engaging, artists, to, to take a piece home, to have a piece of art in your house, to open up a discussion amongst your own family, friends, community, it, it adds to... It adds to the structure of the community actually causes uh, something in the imagination to blossom, I think. And I think that's, that's quite important about a show like The right. Raising Borders. Right, right. That's absolutely right. Who, curator of the exhibition, we didn't mention. Vijay Kumar. Who and himself is an artist. He is an artist. He's a printmaker. He also mm -hmm. teaches mm -hmm. printmaking. And he's been with me from day one. In fact, we sat down and mapped out all the artists in the New York area and the open studio visits Vijay and I together because <coughs> he knows all the artists personally. He's like buddies and grew up with all of mm -hmm. a, a lot of the senior artists. Yeah. And now, of course, he makes sure he keeps his hand in. And you know, every year, the number, as you mentioned earlier, the number is growing up. And well, we also put year? out calls. We also put out calls. This year, how many artists you We've have? We've got 41 exhibit? this 41. year. And uh, can you give the venue? Yes. Now I need my specs for this because it's, you know, Queen's venues are very complicated. It's Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean the addresses, the addresses. Because, you know, like here it's 36 and 36, 36 Avenue and 36th yeah. Street. I mean, so it's now a bit complicated. <laughs> anyway, Crossing Art Queen's, it's 136-17, 39th Avenue. Now don't tell me that's not complicated. <laughs> At Main Street. You're really the show, 36-17, 39th <laughs> Avenue at Main Street. It's on the ground floor. And actually, when you do come to the gallery, look up how people should look up how to get there through Subway. They will find out. It's the easily available, yeah. but the, the directions. But when you come there, it's a beautiful gallery. So there you have the ninth annual Erasing Borders exhibition of contemporary Indian art is going to take place and it is going to take place in Queens. I'm very proud of Queens, so it's very easy to come and few of the artists who are taking part in that exhibition is 
we had read thus and uh, Kulinder Kaur Du, I hope I said your last name correctly. You did. Thank you so much for coming to yeah, the studio and uh, telling us about the exhibition and hope to see you at the exhibition. Program continues right after this message.